Many parts of the world have been suffering from increasing levels of damaging wildfires which spread across the countryside, burning miles of land, as well as burning homes and even killing people. Environmental conditions which are creating these wildfires appear to mean that the number of fires are going to increase each and every year. However, in some locations, there may be an unexpected and natural way of preventing the fires from spreading so far and causing so much damage in the form of the humble beaver. Now, while wildfires do seem to be a hugely damaging event to natural landscapes, the fires themselves are not just a natural event, but also a necessary event. Fires burning through the wilderness areas clear the ground for new plants to grow. They also return nutrients back into the soil. There are even some plants which are called pyrophytic plants, which are either resistant to the fire damage or require fire for the seeds to germinate. So there are plants in Australia like eucalyptus and banksia where the seeds are sealed with resin and the heat of a fire is required to melt the resin. Once the resin has been melted the seeds can then germinate in the bare fertile soil cleared by the fire. It gives the seeds a good head start on life free from competition from other plants. The eucalyptus plant also has buds on the adult tree formed deep within the bark of the tree, known as epicormic buds. These buds remain dormant until the other buds have been killed off. When the bark is damaged by a fire, the new buds rapidly emerge, but on the surface they seem to be a dead and damaged tree. These buds can draw nutrients from stores underneath the surface of the earth, so even if the tree has been badly damaged, it can draw upon a protected food source, enough to fuel their rapid growth enabling the tree as a whole to rapidly recover from a fire. Eucalyptus trees may also have a role in actively promoting wildfires. The eucalyptus trees produce eucalyptus oil, which is highly flammable, assisting in the spread of fires. In addition, once the eucalyptus tree does start to burn, there is a risk that the tree will actually explode, throwing burning material over a large area, making a wildfire difficult and even dangerous to bring under control. Now, like the eucalyptus, some species of banksia can also use nutrients stored underground as a way of escaping fire damage, except in the case of some species of banksia, the store is in the form of what's known as a lignotuber, which is basically an underground swollen stem. The parent plant is actually killed off by the fire, the banksia can use this lignotuber to sprout up in apparently a new plant just a short distance away from where the original plant was located. In America, there's a species called the lodgepole pine, also known as the twisted pine. It requires fire to actually crack open the pine cones and then release the seeds within. So these seeds can be released, but can also benefit from the assistance of an area cleared by fire. Now, the other well-known pyrophytic plants are the giant redwoods or giant sequoia. Now, while their seeds don't actually require fire to germinate, the warm air currents created by fire will dry out the cones, allowing the seeds within the cone to be released. Resultant sequoia seedlings can then grow in far better conditions. They don't have to compete with other plants where squirrels and other animals aren't going to come along and nibble away at any of the new shoots. However, that isn't the only adaption to fire in these giant trees. The bark of the trees is also very resistant to all but the very hottest of fires. While their bark may be burnt or scorched on the surface, underneath the tree is still alive and well. If the bark is removed or a fire burns too hot, the tree will possibly suffer fire damage and then also die. Conditions where the fire will potentially get too hot for this fire can result from a build-up of undergrowth at the base of the tree, building up over the years without a recent fire coming along and removing them, or alternatively, New species of fir tree being planted in the area which not only burn hotter and for longer than most native local trees, but also carry the fire high up into the canopy. The sequoia is far more vulnerable to fire damage. So that covers some of the pyrophytic plants. Where do the beavers actually fit into the picture? Well, the notable aspects of the beaver, like the unusual tails, powerful teeth, thick fur, beavers though are probably best known for their dam building. Within the dam, 
beavers create a lodge or a living space right within the dam, which is above the water, protected from the elements by branches and mud. The lodge not only protects them from the elements, but also from predators like wolves. In addition, the area below the lodge can also be used as a food store in the winter. Now, the exits from the lodge are also underwater, so unless a potential predator, very good swimmer, be that it's fairly safe from a predator in the lodge. And even were a predator to somehow make it into the lodge, there are multiple exits into the water, allowing the beaver to evade any potential attack. Now, the creation of these dams and lodges also changes the surrounding air ecosystem by blocking the path of rivers, creating large, deep pools and ponds next to the lodge. Ideal not just for the foraging beaver, but also providing additional protection from most of their predators. Beavers are very vulnerable while on land and in the open. They look to retreat into the water when threatened. Now the creation of these ponds also then spawn a number of smaller rivers and streams. As the water that builds up behind the beaver dam tries to find another way down to the ocean. The general effect then is to transform a single river into a sprawling wetland area. It is the creation of these wetlands that the beavers reduce the significant spread of wildfires. Since, like the relatively narrow barrier of a single river, wetlands created by the beaver to cover up a substantial area, making it virtually impossible for a wildfire to jump across from one area to another, thus restricting the spread of wildfires and containing them to a limited area. For the benefits provided by the beavers go even further than that. Since plants within the wetland area are generally protected from the worst of the fire damage, once the fire is over, plants and their seeds within the wetland area act as a reservoir of plants, and sometimes even animals as well, and then repopulate the area cleared by the fire, allowing the area to recover and regenerate after the fire has gone. 